Greetings from Texas, y'all. Putting together a quick video here on using an ESP32 and a Home Assistant integration to monitor the current draw status and pressure of my well pump here at home. I wasn't able to find any very good documentation on where had, this had been done before. So in case any of you out there are trying to do something similar, wanted to put this together uh, so you could see how I did it. And it's been working great here for a couple of months. And uh, hey, let's walk through it. So the ESP32, I am going to assume for this video that you understand what that microcontroller is, how to use it with a Home Assistant integration, how to write simple YAML, and get that configured and up and running on your Home Assistant uh, application that you're running already. So in this case, we're going to be using an ADS 1115 16-bit uh, 4-digit. Four channel analog to digital converter. This one happens to have an adjustable gain amplifier on it. Hey, there's all kinds of versions of these out there, so uh, whatever floats your boat. We'll also be using this uh, pressure sensor. This one happens to be a 0 100 psi range with a 0 0.5 to 4.5 linear voltage output on that. There'll be three connections on this one. Your voltage in, which is going to be 5 volts, we'll get that off the ESP32 room chip. Um, we're also be going to, or we're also going to feed the ADS 1115 with five volts as well. So hey, we're just going to take that common voltage and feed our five volt sensor with that. You'll have to reference ground as well, and then you'll have your output signal that will feed back to the uh, analog digital converter. For the current transformer, this is how we're going to get status off the well pump, and we're also, you know, going to get an actual uh, current draw reading out of that. So that'll be pretty cool. This happens to be the SCT-013-030, which is the 30 amp version of that. I've got a, a one and a half horse well pump. It's down about 350 feet. So obviously I've got um, the initial current draw of the motor, plus that's a pretty good uh, cable run down there. This model does have the built-in burden resistor. There's a lot of confusion about these, temp or these uh, current transformers out there. And depending on which blog or reference you're reading or whatever, uh, a lot of them say, hey, you got to add the burden resistor. Hey, where's your burden resistor? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the one that needs the burden resistor is not the one we're using. We're using this one, the SET 013-30, which outputs voltage, 0 to 1 volts. Okay, the one everybody's talking about is the one you'll see all over online. That's the 013-000. That's a 0 to 100 amp with a 0 to 50 milliamp output, that one does not have the burden resistor. If you're going to do it in that application, you'll need to adjust accordingly for that. I'm not using that one. I'm using this one. And we're going to cut the headphone plug off the end of it and just use the two wires inside it. Okay, back to the ESP32 room chip. Got a lot of pins on it, okay? We're not going to use all of them. We're only going to use uh, these. This is what we're concerned with. Our 5 volts, our ground, and our I2C clock and I2C data. So adding in the ADS 1115, let's just start walking through it. Voltage, okay, we're going to grab 5 volts off of pin 19. Great. Ground, we're going to grab that over here. Uh, serial clock for the I2C, we're going to grab that off GIOP 22 or pin 36. Serial data, same thing, GIOP 21. Uh, which is pin 33. We are going to shunt the address pin to ground. Uh, you'll see that when we edit the YAML, that gives us the address we're looking for. Your ADC 1115 may be different. This one, it happens to default to a specific address when we shunt that to ground. We'll see that in a second. Okay, adding in our sensors, pretty straightforward. Current transformer, we're going to be using analog 0 and analog 1. And then for our, our um, water pressure sensor, we're going to have to reference ground. So we wire one of those to ground. It needs the 5 volts. We're also going to give it 5 volts. And then we're going to wire it back to analog 2. Here's what it all looked like prototyping it, making sure it worked. <laughs> Proof of concept before I actually deployed it. So uh, Final mounting location inside one of these clear boxes that I mounted out within the well house. Don't super pay attention to the colors because there are some um, connections behind that ESP32 on the breakout board here between the board and the chip itself that I made. But most of the colors pretty much match what we just looked at. 
in that. Here was my existing, uh, pretty basic. There's your on off pressure sensor up there. There's the well uh, gauge itself. We'll need that. That's what you're going to reference and calibrate your sensors from, obviously. Here's everything in its, or here, here's the final um, layout of everything. So just added a T in there. There's our uh, wet pressure sensor on the end. That's why we're back to the ESP32. You'll see the the fluke current transformer behind there. You're going to need to do that to be able to calibrate your CT clamp when all said and done. This is actually the inrush current. Um, or I say inrush current. This is actually right when the well tripped on. So that's the brief 9.75. Obviously when it comes on and the well pressure is low, triggering it to come on, that pump's moving a lot more water because it's not pushing against, you know, a full pressure tank. So your pressure, your, your amperage on your well pump is going to go down the higher the pressure gets because the pump's doing less wa less work. It's moving less water. So you'll see that fluctuation. People think, oh, wow, well, how, you know, your current draw is going to go up as the pressure goes up. Now, it doesn't work that way with centrifugal pumps. The pump's not doing as much work. It's not moving as much water. So your current draw will actually go down as your pressure tank builds up uh, pressure. That's what it looked like finally mounted. Uh, one lead goes to the pressure sensor. The other goes to the CT, which is inside the electrical disconnect box right there. Uh, just grabbing one leg of the well pump. 240 volts. Okay, let's look at the YAML. First, we have to tell the ESP that we have an ADS uh, 1115 connected to it. So we have to enable the I2C bus here. And in this case, we're referencing where we landed those two wires. Uh, for the I2C for the serial data, we put that on pin 21 or GIOP 21. For the clock, we put that on 22. Pretty straightforward. We're not uh, enabling scan because we don't have multiple... Uh, things on there as well, and we're only using one bus, so this is bus A. Back here where we grounded the address pin on the ADS uh, 1115, that gave us address 0x48. That's why we grounded it. Okay, if you don't ground it, it gives you something else. If you shunt it over to, I don't know, one of the other analog inputs, it gives you a different address in case you're using multiple ones of these. In my case, we're not. Continuous mode is required to be on. You'll see that in ESP32 Home. It'll tell you if you're using the CT clamp sensor um, sensor module that you need to have continuous mode on. So we have that on. The sensor, this is where we tell it what we're doing. Uh, we're telling it the platforms, the ADS 1115. The multiplexer is analog 0 and analog 1 because those are the two pins we're using for that. Um, for the pressure sensor, which you'll see is ADC underscore ADS 115 or 1115P. And we're using a ground to analog 2 reference for that pressure sensor. Here we're adding the uh, calibrate linear filter. And this is where we match what we see in real life to what we see through the logs coming out of the ESP32. Um, and calibrate that sensor. For the CT clamp, same thing here as well. We want to calibrate that to a known measurement that we've taken with, you know, some type of, of multimeter referencing. Just make sure the ESP is seeing exactly what we are in, in calibrating those as well. And then for the status sensor, you'll see it here. It's just a simple analog threshold sensor. Uh, in this case, we're telling it Hey, if you see an analog, or if you see a um, current draw on that well pump of 1.5 or greater, we consider that an on status for the well pump. And then that all looks like this down at the bottom in our Home Assistant dashboard. I haven't prettied this up and made the icons change colors and do flashy cards or anything yet. Just wanted to do proof of concept. Uh, uh, well pump current does read correct. Well pump status does read correct. And then water well pressure also reads correct. Uh, again, this screenshot was taken as it was uh, about to shut off. My well pump runs basically on at 42 PSI off at 62. Uh, so I grabbed this right before that. 
but then you also have the history you can see the um, trends of you know how long your well pump or your well pressure falls and then the spike of it coming on you also see the current etc um, just you know hey hopefully somebody else might want to do this okay so I wanted to walk through it anyway so long take care it's been fun chatting see you next time